Longtime Bachelor host Chris Harrison has announced he is stepping aside as the face of the franchise he hosted for nearly 20 years. The move comes after his defense of a contestant photographed at an antebellum theme party. TJ Holmes has more. Over the years, we've seen a lot of bachelors and bachelorettes come and go. Chris Harrison is out. ABC announcing the longtime host is stepping aside as the face of the franchise he's been a part of for nearly two decades. On Instagram, Harrison writing, I've had a truly incredible run as host of the Bachelor franchise, and now I'm excited to start a new chapter. I'm so grateful to Bachelor Nation for all of the memories we've made together. Tonight, the journey begins again. In a franchise known for its shocking characters and dramatic exits. I'm, I'm done. Here you go. Here's this. Harrison has been the consistent presence throughout the 25 seasons of The Bachelor and 17 seasons of The Bachelorette and their multiple spinoffs. Until the host sparked his own controversy earlier this year, defending Rachel Kirkinell after photos of her surfaced attending a plantation-themed party in 2019 in this heated conversation with Rachel Lindsay, the show's first black bachelorette. It's not a good look. No, it's not a good, well, Rachel, is it a good look in 2018 or is it not a good look in 2021? It's because not a, a good look ever, because she's celebrating well, the old South. She's cel if I went to that party, what would I represent I, at that party? My guess, these girls got dressed up and went to a party and had a great time. They were 18 years old. Now, does that make it okay? I don't know, Rachel. You tell me. The uproar pushed Harrison to apologize. It was a mistake. I made a mistake. I am an imperfect man. I made a mistake, and I own that. Stepping away as guest hosts filled in. Retired NFL linebacker and author Emmanuel Acho leading the conversation on last season's Take After the, the Final the Rose. <laughs> and former Bachelorettes Caitlin Bristow and Tasha Adams are at the helm of this new season. Well, this is unfamiliar territory for unscripted television. The question has to happen is, what's the long term? How does this play out over the long tail? Oh my God. Oh God. A desert gem. <laughs> All right, our thanks to TJ Holmes for that report. And let's explore that a little bit more with the help of ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host, Mike Muse. Mike, good morning to you. First of all, what's your reaction? Chris Harrison stepping aside after nearly 20 years. <laughs> well, good morning. Uh, yes, I think that it, it's it's. It's comp is it I can't even get it out, Diane. I'm so sorry. Mike that that Muse question is speechless, was so loaded. Everybody. I was like, I could go so many ways with this. <laughs> right? One, because Chris Harrison has always just been a part of the Bachelor. Like ever since we got introduced to the Bachelor series, we were pretty much introduced to him. And when you've been around someone for over twenty seasons, as long as he has been uh with the Bachelor, you really get to know a person when they come into your house um every week, if you will. And so seeing the Bachelor without him is 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 odd, right? Uh, but I'll also say that it was needed, and I also will say that it was necessary. Uh, there is a season for everything, Diane, as you know, and I do believe that the season for him came to end in the way that he handled that conversation with Rachel. I think when the, as far as he went with it, uh, there was just no point of return, and especially in the wake of the backdrop that we're having in our society today. Our society is having difficult conversations around race and, and race relations and race dynamics, and for the way that he doubled down on the ignorance. It's okay to be ignorant about a subject, but it is the doubling down and the insistence and the attacks and how you did it uh, was what I believe would cause people to have a reaction to him to where he needed to leave the platform so that it wouldn't become a continuous distraction uh, for what was happening. So, Mike, where does the franchise go from here? How does this change things aside from just who's going to host? You know, Diane, you and I talked about this a while ago when this first came out, like who, and I think our, our phrase was, who would have thought that we'll be discussing social construct through the lens of The Bachelor? Uh, I think The Bachelor has a really important moment in our society. Pop culture always holds up to mirror our society to reflect what is happening within our nation. Yes, this is a show about dating, but what we are now going to be doing, the, the, the Bachelor production, the company that you know produces The Bachelor, they have a chance now to really not necessarily expand the 
conversation on race. That's not their job. Uh, but they do have an opportunity to moderate discourse through the one-offs that these contestants will have with each other, the contestants will have with the bachelor or the bachelorette. Uh, and they can really begin to ask questions because, I am. when you think about it, when most of America goes out on a first date, a second date, these type of questions do come up. Uh, and so I think the bachelor, it is unscripted television, has a chance to truly make it unscripted by allowing these type of conversations to come forward and go forward. Uh, so I think not only will the contestants learn, but it gives a chance for us to look into the views of America because these contestants come from so many different parts of the country that has so many different types of viewpoints. And what better way to learn about the viewpoints of different regions of our country uh, than through contestants who have that? Not to put all the blame on race reckoning and race theory on the bachelor contestants. That's not what I'm saying. Uh, but they do have an opportunity if they so choose to really advance and, and to help moderate this discourse in their own way. Now, Tasha Adams and Caitlin Bristow have stepped in as temporary replacements. So far, they're getting great reviews. So you think they'll keep the gig? <laughs> I sure do hope so, Diane. I think having that mix is interesting. One, because they were former contestants. Uh, but then two, they don't. They have shown that they, they are unafraid to speak their mind and to speak their opinion. And nowadays, when people choose to get behind or in front of a, a camera or get uh, behind or in front of a microphone, I think we do now have a responsibility uh, not to uh, be afraid to state our opinions, right, and to move in uncomfortable dynamics and situations, those two have proven um, that they are able to do that and are willing to do that. And I think that type of dynamic is needed to move forward because a bachelor diet just can't stay the bachelor. That that ship has sailed. That that ship sailed this last season. They now have to redefine themselves. And, and what that is, I don't know, uh, but they can't do business as usual. And I think those hosts uh, will help them lead them into this next era of the bachelor. All right, ABC News contributor and Sirius XM radio host, Mike Muse. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.